Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back on my channel. I hope you're having a great day, evening from wherever you're watching right now. Today we are going to have a look at MATLAB and its free counterpart. The name of the software I'm going to talk about today is... John C. Okay, okay, just kidding, just kidding. Enough memes for today, I, I promise. MATLAB versus Octave. What are the differences between MATLAB and Octave and what common features do they have? So first of all, what is Octave? Octave, or also known as GNU Octave, is open source software which is interpreted, that means you do not need to compile any code to run it. And it was developed in 1988, so four years later after MATLAB was starting to develop their software. And it was developed by John Eaton and in one of his colleagues in Texas. And the name Octave uh, has nothing to do with music, actually. It is an homage to the professor of John Eaton, whose name was Octave Levenspiel. And he was known for doing back-of-the-envelope calculations, so that's why he used this name. I'm going to show you the differences and common features, but I will talk about the most important ones. If you want to find any other common features or differences between both tools, I would suggest that you check out the description below and I will post some links there where you can find additional information. But before we getting started and jump to the slides, I want to first show you a small trick which you can do in MATLAB and that is, let's say you go on my GitHub repository and you find code and you do not really like code because it's maybe not too handy but you're more a fan of PDF. So what you can do is use one single command, type in the file name and the format you want to output it to and you're done. I'll show you right now and after that we're going to jump into the slides and let's go. So I'm going to quickly show you the trick that I mentioned earlier on and that's very simple. Let's say the script on the left hand side here is third video. That's the one you want to translate into a PDF. Then you would write publish, write the name of the script in quotes, so let's say third and autocomplete with the tabulator key, comma, in quotes PDF, closing bracket and then type enter and it has been exported or created. If we switch now to the folder, go into the HTML folder, open the third video PDF and you can see very clean PDF even with the table of contents. So very convenient command. I hope that you liked it and can make use out of it. In case you want to install GNU Octave, you google GNU Octave, go on their homepage and can easily find the download button right here. Just look for the file you want to install, download it and then install the software. It would look like this, Octave GUI. Now when I talk about GUI, uh, important thing to note here that Octave can also be run in the CLI, so command line interface, not in the GUI as you can see here, but MATLAB can do that as well. So this is how the GUI looks like. It's very simple, very clean, as you might see. So if you want to play with it, feel free to do so. I will just minimize it for now. Maybe we'll use it later on, but let's see. So as you already know, it's MATLAB and Octave today, a small comparison. So the learning objectives for today are, you know where to get GNU Octave and what it is all about. So you can click on the link if you have the slides, which you can find in my repo. And you also know about the similarities and the differences between MATLAB and Octave. The most important similarities here are that matrices are the fundamental concept of both tools. Both support complex numbers. Complex numbers will be covered in the sixth video of our MATLAB series. Both have powerful math functions and libraries. And both offer a so-called profiler where you can measure which part of the code would takes how long and you can find hotspots in your code. That means code that takes extensively long to execute. So the price. I have put two smileys in the MATLAB column because you can get it for free if you are a student and your university is sponsored by MathWorks and you can even get it for a small price. So it's not very expensive if you are a student which is not supported by university or let's say you are a startup which is in, uh, let's say, incubator program from university or anywhere else. I do not have a 
I do not have put a frowny face in the MATLAB column because I will mention after this video why I think MATLAB is not very expensive also when it comes to efficiency of your developer or programmer who might be you in this case who is watching right now. And on the right hand side of course Octave is an open source project and it's for free. So about the user interface I really really love the interface of MATLAB I'm already used to it it's very convenient to use not so much overload not too much buttons so very convenient to use I can find everything documentation is well well done one of the best ones I ever found for a software and on the right hand side we could have put a smiley face there but I think as compared to MATLAB MATLAB really wins here but the documentation of the open source project Octave is very very good I have to admit so about the RAM So for the RAM, I have put a smiley face on both sides. I have read that Octave might be a little bit slower, but I still believe and know that MATLAB is very fast, especially if you know how to use it and um, you can compile it into other code, can convert existing MATLAB code into C code, etc. You shouldn't fall into this trap saying just because MATLAB has a GUI, it is slower. I mean, Octave is also a GUI, but you can use both in a CLI, so command line interface. But even using the GUI, both tools are very fast. I will talk about that after the video, so make sure you stay with me and listen to it very closely. So in today's demo, I'm going to show you some differences that are listed here. So about the pre and so-called post increment, which is a little bit C style. We talk about line continuation white spaces, assignment, the logical not operator, mathematical operations in general, and commenting. Without further ado, let's jump right into MATLAB GUI and let's get started. So about the pre and post increment C style. Let's say we have a variable i called 3, or assigned to 3, and we want to say we use, uh, we say i++, and it does not work. And you see MATLAB even suggests that maybe we meant i equals i plus 1 and if we execute this it works. Now if you go to Octave if we do this here i equals 3 and we say i plus plus this works and the next step we would have a 4 even the other operation works plus plus i even i plus equals let's say 3 this works as well as you can see. Let's say you want to create a vector of random numbers which exists of one row and two columns. We'd go with rand 1, 2. This works as usual. Let's say we don't have space and we want to go into the next line. Then we would have to do this. Sorry. Do this. This would work. You cannot do this here. It says invalid expression. Now if we go to Octave and say run 1 comma 2, this would work. A very nice difference to know is about white spaces. Let's say I want to create a row vector that is x. It looks like this. 3 and 5. And we want to transpose the vector. So we do this. This works. But if I do this here with a white space in between, it says the character vector is not terminated properly. Now if we do the same in Octave with a white space, this works as you can see. Next thing we want to talk about is assignment. For that we are now in Octave and we want to say that Z equals Y equals x plus 3. This line would perfectly execute. We have not defined x. Let's say we say uh, x equals 4 and then um, z equals y equals x plus 3. This would work as you can see. If we do the same in MATLAB, x equals 3, y, um, sorry, z, z equals y equals x plus 3. This would not work. 
what we will have to do instead is, as you can see, you would have to put a comma in between so that the operations will be performed separately. So we can test it right now. 1 does not equal 2 is true. But if we say 1 does not equal 2, this does not work. And it even suggests again, hey, did you mean that? And of course we meant that and we're good to go. If, if we are now an octave and try both things, let's say 1 does not equal 2, say it's true, and 1 does not equal 2 is also true. So now talking about some of the mathematical operations. If we want to use exponentiation, we have seen in one of the previous videos that we are doing this by, let's say we want 3 with an exponent of 3, we would have 27, that works. If we want to do this in octave, we can use another option. We can either use a caret symbol, as I've just shown you, or we can use double star operator, that would work as well. For the string delimiter, you can either use the single quote or double quote in both tools. In the early versions of MATLAB, you had to use the single quote operator for string delimiters, but now you can use the single quote as well as the double quote. Octave supports C style hexadecimal notation. Let's say you want to convert this number here. You would have 10. Did not work in MATLAB. Let's just test it. Not XA. Does not work. MATLAB even suggests us this here, but that's not what we meant. We actually had to use, and we meant that we had to use the hex to dag function and type in the argument, which is a is 10. Last but not least, we're going to talk about commenting. So as you know, in MATLAB, you can comment with a percentage operator, something like this. And in Octave, you can even use the hash or pound sign, which looks like this, and then write something test. It does not work in MATLAB as you can see, but it does work in Octave. This is a comment as well as this is a comment. So both signs can be used interchangeably. So guys, this was the video on the differences and common features between MATLAB and Octave. I hope that you could take something away from it. But before we finish this video, some few very important points that we have to discuss. First of all, the documentation. So the thing is with Octave, of course it's free. And of course you can use it as an alternative for MATLAB. But in my humble opinion, I would say that if you use, start using Octave, over time I, I think you will slowly go to MATLAB. Especially because of the toolboxes and it's not that, that expensive or even for free for your student. And your university is sponsored by MathWorks. But there are some differences, for instance, as I talked about the GUI, which I really like, I'm, I'm a little bit biased because I'm using it for a little bit longer now. I like the documentation because the thing is, I find basically everything in the documentation. If you have any problems, you can Google it and find it in like five minutes maximum. And with other languages, from my knowledge, it is very tedious and you might spend one to two hours on uh, Stack Overflow, for instance, to find the mistake that might have occurred. But that's really case dependent. I'm not trying to say that every problem is like that, but that's at least what I experienced. Maybe you can write down in the comments what you have experienced if you're an experienced developer, which I'm not. The thing is that MATLAB also has these powerful toolboxes, which Octave, as compared to MATLAB, has not. So that's one of the big advantages of MATLAB. And some people might say, okay, one big disadvantage is that you have to pay for MATLAB, especially if you're a startup, a big company, etc. That's not completely correct. For startups, there are special programs for MathWorks that you can use to get MATLAB cheaper or get a student discount for your company using MATLAB for your startup and for students maybe you get it for free if your university has the license for it or you can get it for a few bucks it's not really expensive and if you're a big company let's say BMW I know that BMW uses MATLAB extensively to develop cars let's say your engineer is way more efficient using MATLAB as compared to using C maybe it depends on the case I know but just for the sake of explanation Let's say he uses another tool, let's say Python, he's not too familiar with it, there are some compatibility problems, etc. I think the efficiency of the engineer is 
worth the money or worth the investment into a software like MATLAB. So you really have to think about different factors that really play a role here. On the other side, talking about big corporations, let's say you are a startup or work at BMW and you want to have consulting. MathWorks offers consulting specifically for your needs, whereas compared to, let's say, open source communities, there might be some individuals or few individuals that learn the software, are experts in it, and then go out there and teach the world about this software specifically or this language. So you really have to admit that MathWorks here is very superior when it comes to consulting, trainings, etc. But it's really up to you what you're going to do and what, what type of tool you want to choose. As mentioned, I'm a little bit biased and I would choose a MATLAB every day, but that's another topic. A common misconception also is that MATLAB is very slow. That depends on the case and what you are comparing it to. A lot of people don't actually know that you can translate MATLAB code into another language, let's say C or any other language. I will talk about that in a future series, by the way, when we talk about performance. And they heard something from their colleagues or in university and people were saying MATLAB is very slow. And when you ask them why, they say it's because, because of the GUI. And that's not a valid argument. I mean, you cannot compare apples and bananas and say, okay, it's now bad because of this and that. You really have to compare it on, on the same level. Python is, a lot of people think, okay, Python is the, the better alternative for MATLAB, but it really depends on your use case. What if Python needs to do something that only MATLAB can, but you have to write very long code in Python to actually get there, and the MATLAB is already implemented. So it's always a trade-off. You really have to think about the efficiency and the person who is using the tool. So if you are using the tool and you are way more efficient with MATLAB than with any other language, let's say um, Python or Scilab or any, anything like that, then use MATLAB. Why would you go a step back and use something that takes longer time just to use the language and say, hey, I'm using this language and it doesn't make sense to me. What you also have to think about is the code development itself and the efficiency, as I previously mentioned. If the code takes you too long to write because there's no package or no function already implemented for that, you're giving up efficiency. But write longer code, which is harder to debug, which is harder to maintain. So as I mentioned, it's, it's really a trade-off in that sense. The last thing I want to talk about before we end this video is I've seen a lot of memes. Now going back to memes because I started with one in the beginning. I see a lot of memes uh, trying to ridicule MATLAB. Ah, they're starting uh, with machine learning and deep learning now and it's not a tool for machine learning. Guys, the thing is that a lot of people meticulously follow one path. They think, okay, now I'm following the path of PyTorch, the path of uh, TensorFlow, or the path of any other framework. And they think that's, that's a solution to everything. That's not the case. You can use the best of both worlds or three worlds, four worlds, however many languages you are using, and combine them. MATLAB can work with Python and vice versa, for instance. Or you can export MATLAB code into C code to run it faster. So it really depends on your case and try to open your mind and do a little bit of research when it comes to stuff like this. In the future, there will be a linear algebra series, which we're going to do with MATLAB and Python. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Smash the like button if you haven't already. Feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues who might also benefit from this and who are also MATLAB enthusiasts or programming enthusiasts or maybe Octave enthusiasts in this case. And as always, make sure to keep engineering your mind. Enjoy your day or evening from wherever you're watching. Maybe enjoy your sleep. And I would say, see you in the next video. Peace.